Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over a fascinating question concerning kinetic energy work and the work energy theorem. I'm just going to spend a couple minutes here setting this up before we start actually answering the question because we want to make sure we know what we're being asked. And we're going to try to figure out, we're going to figure out the work needed to increase the speed of a car. And we have the same car and we're going to look at the car in two different situations, the speed of the car. In the first situation, situation A, we're going to take a car and we're going to go from, we're going to increase its speed from four to eight meters per second. We want to know how much work is required to increase the car's speed from four to eight meters per second. We're going to call that amount of work, work A. Then we're going to take the same car and we're going to increase its speed from eight to 12. So first from four to eight, and then in situation B from eight to 12, and we're going to call the amount of work that it takes to increase the same car speed from 8 to 12 meters per second, work B. And we want to know, this is the question we're trying to answer, which of the following is true? The work A is greater than work B, work A and B are equal, or work B is greater than work A. Now we have been given the velocities and we're just going to say that the car has a mass of 500 kilograms. Yes, I know many cars or most cars have a mass greater than 500 kilograms, significantly greater, but I'd like to pick a nice round number. In this case, we're not really concerned so much about the absolute change. We just want to compare the two. So it doesn't really matter what mass we choose. And I'm just going to choose 500 kilograms. We've been given the velocities, but we want to know work so now we got to think, remember, we're going to use our work energy theorem, which says that the net work done on an object is equal to change in the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy, of course, is one half mv squared, the velocity squared, mass times velocity squared. Now, you might jump to this conclusion because you'll notice in each case we go from 4 to 8, which is a change of 4 meters per second, then from 8 to 12, which is a change of 4 meters per second. So that would make it seem like, well, it's the same car, it's the same increase, the same change in speed, and therefore, all we have to do is calculate the change in kinetic energy is equal to one half 500 kilograms times four meters per second squared. And you get that the change in kinetic energy for both of those cars is 4,000 joules. And therefore you would say, oh, they're both equal to each other. Work A is equal to work B. Well, if you do that, you're wrong. I'm very sorry. You have to remember the work energy theorem says the change in the kinetic energy. And it's the interesting thing about it is it's the velocity squared. It's not simply just four meters per second change. Okay, it's the velocity squared. So we actually have to go through and calculate the change in kinetic energy. So this A equals B is wrong. And now let's go through and actually calculate the kinetic energy. We actually have to do that for each of them, or the change in kinetic energy. So for A, we're going to calculate the change in kinetic energy. Now the kinetic energy is one half mv squared. When we calculate the change, it's always the final minus the initial. So the final kinetic energy at A is 1 half times 500 times 8, because that's the final velocity, final speed, 8 meters per second squared. We're going to subtract from that the initial, 4 meters per second, and we get that the work in order to cre increase the car speed from 4 to 8 meters per second is 1,200 joules. Well, now let's calculate the work needed to increase the car speed from 8 to 12 meters per second. So we have work B, the final kinetic energy, because the final amount's initial, is 1 half times 500 times 12 squared, minus the initial 1 half times 500 times 8 meters per second squared. Remember, we just said the car's mass is 500 kilograms. It doesn't really matter what the object is, we're just saying it's an object with a mass of 500 kilograms. So in order to go from 8 to 12, we actually have to do 20,000 joules of work. So you can see it's significantly more, and it's more because it's the velocity squared. It's not just the velocity. Okay, so there's the answer, and that tells us that the work for B is greater than the work for A. And that should point out that really when you're doing these problems, you really got to think about what they're asking you and what the equations and what the principle and the physics principles say. In this case, it says that the network is equal to the change in the kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is the final mass initial. And you might as well just go through and calculate the final mass initial and see what you get. Don't assume anything. 
Okay, so there you go. I think that's a fascinating problem. Very interesting. It makes you think a little bit. It's not just simply plugging the numbers and go. All right? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that interesting. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please give me a nice uh, uh, comment in the comment section below. And how about a thumbs up? And we'll see you in the next video. Thank you very much.